Hi there, it's Jeff here with a macroeconomics video looking at the economics of the savings ratio. So saving is the act of deferring or postponing spending out of your disposable income. And the savings ratio or the savings rate is a pretty important economic indicator that measures the percentage of people's disposable incomes, that's income after direct taxes and welfare transfers, that households choose to save rather than spend on consuming goods and services. So an important bit of data and the formula for the savings ratio is savings divided by disposable income multiplied by 100% to give a percentage. It's also known as the average propensity to save. So people's marginal propensity to save how much I choose to save out of any change in income, that will affect the average propensity to save. A higher savings ratio means that people are cho they're choosing to save a larger chunk of their disposable income, while a fall in the ratio suggests they're spending more. So here's the data, and the most recent data has been included up to the end of 2024. And you can see that the savings ratio does vary quite a lot on average from year to year. It was low during the early part of the, uh, of the period, we've got 20 years worth of data here, but increased quite significantly in the wake of the global financial crisis. Don't forget the UK economy was in a recession in 2009 and the savings ratio jumped up from 7.1 to 10 and then 11%. It then came down again uh, during the, uh, the period from 2011 onwards, although it jumped in 2025. But then look at the big rise in 2020 during the pandemic. Of course, this was prompted by the fact that people were un in lockdown, uh, their movement was restricted, a lot of the, uh, the goods and services they could spend money on, including travel and tourism, uh, were not available during the two lockdowns. Uh, wage income was uh, held pretty high by the furlough scheme. So there was quite a surge in the household savings ratio which, which reached 16.8%. It's obviously fallen back again as the economy has recovered from the pandemic. But notice again in 2024, there was a big jump in the savings ratio from 7.5% in 2023 to 10.4% in 2024. Now, in part, I think this is the, uh, the consequence of people's worries about economic growth, about jobs, and also about inflation. So what causes the savings ratio to change? Well, here are some key factors. First of all, interest rates. When interest rates are high, relatively, that makes saving more attractive, potentially increasing the savings ratio. When interest rates are low, as they have been for a lot of the time, that encourages people to borrow money. And borrowing money is dis-saving and spend, reducing their savings. A really key factor is consumer confidence. When people are relatively confident about the economy, about their job security, they're more likely to spend rather than save. Whereas when animal spirits worsen during times of economic uncertainty, households may decide to increase their precautionary savings. Expectations of inflation also have a part to play. High inflation might reduce the real value of savings. We'll look at that in a second or two. Discouraging savings. Or if people expect prices to, uh, to rise, People might decide to save more now to protect their real spending power in the future. A period of deflation might encourage savings due to falling prices. People might decide to postpone their spending in the hope and expectation that what they want to buy will be a little bit cheaper in three or six months time. And wealth effects also affect the savings ratio. When asset prices, such as housing or stock market valuations, when they go up, that can reduce the incentive to save out of income as households feel wealthier, whereas falling asset values might have the opposite effect. Now, why are changes to the savings ratio important? Well, let's think about short and medium term impacts. In the short term, a change in the savings ratio does have an effect on aggregate demand. You see, if people are saving more out of income, that implies less consumption, which can then lower aggregate demand, potentially slowing down growth or deepening a recession. And savings can also act as an economic sa uh, stabiliser. So during downturns, a spike in the savings ratio, as we saw in 2020, can reduce spending worsening in the downturn, unless it's offset by fiscal and monetary policy. 
a higher average propensity to save uh, in, in, caused by, driven by an increase in the marginal propensity to save, that can reduce the value of the multiplier if you know your multiplier formula. In the medium term, well, we need savings to fund investment. So higher household savings can provide funds for investment channel through commercial banks, pension funds or other financial institutions. So it's an important development idea that we need a high level of savings to provide, if you like, the funds to be reinvested and reallocated by the financial system to finance investment. And higher savings can also help reduce debt. So people can save more now to pay off some of their debt in the future, potentially strengthening financial uncertainty. So having savings, both for individuals, for households, and also for companies, can provide a buffer against future economic uncertainty. Yeah, this is an interesting chart. It shows the average interest rate of instant access deposits, money that you can get uh, by using a debit, debit card and taking money out of cash points, for example. And for a large part of the last 10 years, interest rates were very low, below 1%. Well, they have climbed. They've climbed to an average of just over 2.5%. But they've remained relatively low compared to inflation, which, of course, peaked at over 11% in the autumn of 2022. So when the interest earned on savings is lower than the inflation rate, the real value of those savings diminishes over time. So high inflation erodes the real value of people's savings. And as a result, many, many people have been exploring higher yielding accounts. So you've had to become more savvy and more active in how you manage your savings. So people looking for fixed rate savings where they hold their money in at a fixed rate for a year or two, putting money into cash ISAs, which are uh, where the interest is free of tax. And you can see here what's been happening uh, to the balances in the uh, financial sector. Uh, there are over £2 trillion worth of money, amount of money in savings accounts in the UK. Uh, but you can see the growth of the green area, national savings and investments, where the rate of interest is index linked, the growth of cash ISAs and uh, the growth of uh, interest bearing time deposits. Where people are prepared to save, sacrifice some liquidity for a year or two in order to get rates of interest of 4 but perhaps 5 or 6%. And this is what people do in times of inflation. They have to be aware of where their money can earn the best rate of return. So there we go. This video has looked at the economics of the savings ratio. Thanks for joining in. Stay safe, stay curious. See you sometime soon.